I'm continuing to make progress on the NXP Hover Games drone and getting Raspberry Pi with Mavros connected. In a previous video, I demonstrated setting that up with Pixhawk, and over the weekend, I came to the realization that the NXP FMU only has one telemetry port. So you can see it here. I'm going to go ahead and connect the telemetry radio, which is a 3DR radio. I've been using that just for configuration wirelessly with Q ground control. But if we take a look at Pixhawk, what you'll notice on the flight controller is there's two telemetry ports. Now, the first port normally is for your radio, and the second port, a couple of years ago, I covered a video that shows how to uh, make a connector to basically get telemetry out of the telemetry 2 port to a companion computer for back and forth communication. We also have access to the serial port, which is what I previously demonstrated with Mavros. But in the case of the NXP, since we have our telemetry port currently occupied by the 3DR radio, which I want to leave in place just in case I need to do any sort of longer range communication. And since this telemetry port is occupied, I'm going to go ahead and run uh, ROS with the companion computer connected over the serial port. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to enable that because by default, you're not allowed to arm with a USB connected, understandably so. One thing I'd like to cover is providing uh, sufficient power to Pi. Now, in a previous video, I had covered getting power from Pixhawk directly from the telemetry 2 port and have it wired into to the 5 volt and ground pins on Raspberry Pi. That doesn't provide sufficient power, stable power. Therefore, what I've done is taken power off the PDB. We're flying with a 4S LiPo, so we have roughly 16 volts coming off uh, this board these connectors so I've just piggybacked off these two empty connectors the positive and negative and what I've used is this castle creations these are great BECs and just before I had a switch to this thankfully I had it laying around I was trying this uh, Turnigy it supports up to I believe a 4S LiPo so that was fine and then it has a 2 amp 5 volt output but what I discovered is that this thing got really hot a Pi booted up and I was able to connect to it, but unfortunately I didn't feel good about that. If you do any research, Pi 4 I think requires a minimum of 2.5 amps and that can obviously burst up. That's what led me to uh, settle on this Castle Creations uh, BEC. So now we have 5 volts up to 10 amp peak being able to run Pi, so everything should be good there. One other point I'd like to make is that uh, this Castle Creations BEC just has a standard servo connector. I pulled the signal pin out and just sort of routed it back on itself. I, I did the heat shrink uh, just to get it out of the way. I've read that uh, that's used if you're wanting to program new firmware onto the BEC. Obviously, we don't want to accidentally get into that mode and lose power to Pi, whether we're on the ground and especially while we're in the air. With Pi connected, to the BEC, we can get power to it. I've also included uh, the serial connection from this USB on Pi to the NXP FMU. So we have this coming out. That's where we're going to have ser serial communication uh, with Mavros. And let's go ahead and power this up, which will then allow me to uh, connect through SSH. Before I begin this demonstration, let me explain what we have going on here. I have the NXP drone sitting on the desk, powered up, uh, no physical connections between computer and drone. The drone is completely wireless. I have Raspberry Pi connected to my local network. The MacBook that we're working on right now is connected to the same network, so that will allow me to shell into it. I'm going to log in and the first thing that I'll demonstrate is I'm going to run Mavros and we're going to make sure that we have the good connection through the serial port. Let me run this command. Just as a side note, I covered in the previous video these uh, ROS launch files. We can override any of the parameters in the launch file 
from the command line. So I'm going to, in this case, communicate over the serial port. That's this parameter here at a baud rate of 57600. And what we should see is Mavros fire up. We can see that we have good communication. I have my remote control uh, connected and I'm going to try to arm. Throttle down, rudder to the right, and we should see when I do this, you'll hear Pixhawk respond as well as Mavros print an error to the screen. So here we go. Obviously I'm indoors, all the pre-flight checks didn't pass, but the most important thing is it says uh, flying with USB is not safe. So we need to override that parameter. Here's what I'd like to do next. Let's uh, disable the USB arming check, but we're gonna do this through Q ground control. Now this is a really cool uh, capability of Mavros. First thing we need to do is I'm going to get my IP of the MacBook that I'm working from. This is the IP, this 86.36, and you'll notice in the PX4 launch file that I have this string in here. Normally this is empty, the GCS URL. And what that will allow us to do is not only receive data over the serial port, but also over this UDP connection. So what's essentially happening is that when this launch file runs, uh, packets are going to be sent to the computer I'm working from. That could be any computer on your network. I'm not entirely sure what this first port number represents. Maybe that's the port it's sending out from, but this is certainly the port that it's sending to on my local computer, the default for QGround control. So what I'll do is let me launch this. We're gonna run the launch file again. So uh, we'll see the data start flowing through. And then what I'll do is fire up QGround control and we should get a Manual connection. Flight mode. So there we have the connection. I'll just demonstrate by trying to arm with the remote. Pre-flight, GPS horizontal pose error too high. Arming denied. So arming with USB is not safe. Not arming. All of this is happening over my wireless network, which is really cool. Now, let's go to our USB. Let me just search for that. The circuit breaker, and we're going to disable this check. So to do that, we're going to enter this value of 197.848. I'll hit save. That's going to require a reboot. So I'll reboot the FMU. The FMU was rebooted, but a Raspberry Pi is still powered up. We can see here that the communication between Pi and the FMU has died, but I'm going to spin it back up. Manual flight mode, pre-flight, GPS horizontal pose error too high. And let's go ahead and try to arm. I doubt it'll arm because it's sitting on my desk, but we should no longer see the USB check failure. Pre-flight, GPS horizontal pose error too high, arming denied. We have the arming denied because of the safety switch. I'm going to enable the switch. So I've gone ahead and done that. Let me try to arm again. Pre-flight, GPS horizontal pose error too So high. now we're armed and we can see that we're communicating with Q-Ground Control. Disarmed. I could switch to a stabilized flight stabilized mode. Stabilized flight mode. So all of this is happening wirelessly. I know I keep reiterating that. I apologize. It's just a really cool capability. I know this video was long, but wanted to demonstrate how to set this up with the physical connections as well as configuring with the launch file. In an upcoming video, we're going to hopefully be doing some just basic takeoff and land commands. I appreciate you following along with this build. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.